Okay, thanks, thanks everyone for joining. Thanks for being here at Viviatech. It's a pleasure welcoming you in the KPMG booth. Uh, my name is Romain Lamotte. I'm leading the data and AI practice for KPMG in France. Um, and today we'll be uh, discussing um, interesting insights, uh, both from a business angle and a technology angle, uh, into some of the uh, uh, AI adoption programs that we're seeing at our clients uh, globally. Uh, for that, I'm joined by, well, first, first of all, I'm sorry, it's, it's not going to be ladies first, it's going to be Microsoft <laughs> first. Guest first. Uh, guest first. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Philippe, thanks for joining. Uh, Philippe, you're a um, uh, CTO and cybersecurity officer for, for Microsoft, sorry, <laughs> for France. And um, Christy Norton is also joining us. Uh, you're leading the alliance with Microsoft globally. That's correct. Um, both, I mean, the 360 alliance, so Microsoft both as a client, but also as a very significant uh, partner of ours. Um, so um, I, maybe I'll just turn to you, Philip, very quickly, because it's, uh, it's been a big week for Microsoft, and, and I thought maybe we should kick up just to wrap up what, what's, what's, you know, what you've been through this week, Truce France, so the product announcement. Could you maybe just wrap it up for us? Yeah, things are accelerating. You know, we talk about AI, but so at Choose France, we had the pleasure to meet uh, Mr. President uh, Emmanuel Macron, and um, and we invested four billion uh, euros in in France for developing uh, capabilities for for cloud and AI, uh, but also train one million French people, you know, on AI because people need to be acculturated and and, and learn about how to use those solutions. And yesterday we started Build, which is our major developers conference, announcing more than 60 new um, new solutions and amazing things uh, using GPT Omni for the, the latest uh, OpenAI model, which is now available on, on Azure, uh, and, and tons of advancements around copilots and the extensibility of copilots and, and AI on the, on the edge with a new Surface uh, tablet where we have a uh, dozens of models running locally, so that you can have the power of AI on your on your desktop. So, uh, well, tons of Microsoft technology coming up um, today. Uh, so, this is the, the the first segment of a two-hour time we've got with you, Microsoft. Um, and and uh, after this talk, uh, we'll also give you insights into uh, well sustainability and technology. So, what what we're achieving together in that space. Um, and, and there's, there's clear, clear convergence. And also, um, well, news in terms of uh, reinventing finance with technology and with Microsoft technology in particular. So stay tuned after this talk, there'll be two other segments with Microsoft, very interesting on you know, both sustainability and finance. Um, so lo lots of investments, so presumably lots of demand coming up for your services and technology. Um, so from the outside, we could think, you know, all is good and, you know, all companies are transforming at, at a very large pace. And certainly we've seen pretty starking examples of successes. Um, my turn maybe to you, Christine, first. Well, what, what do you think has really changed at our clients for the past 12 to 18 months? Well, there's um, a lot has changed and increasingly uh, with the adoption that some of the, our clients are starting to, um, you know, we see them adopting AI and Gen AI at a faster uh, accelerated pace. Uh, one of the best examples that uh, that I heard from um, from one of one of our clients is they compared the adoption of AI to. Is some of you may have you know some of you may not know this era, but there was once a time when we had to bring computers to work, um, and they compared it to back in that time when employees were bringing computers to work and how they had to the business had to quickly adopt to this new changing way that employees wanted to work and be productive. Uh, and they also realized that in order to um, uh, to re retain the talent, they had to do this. Uh, and then, an additional, if you add on the the levels of security and also the loss of IP, so they, you know, now nowadays, if you walk into a, a, a business and you are going to be employed there, it would be very unusual for you not to have uh, your own personal device. So um, we see that uh, being one of the one of the key one of the key examples. Um, another quick example is just on. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, engagement around 
you know, we want to quickly adopt Gen AI, but then once they start to see what that means, then it starts to create another pattern of, okay, now we need to make sure that we're looking after our data. We need to make sure that we're, you know, our employees are safe, that a cybersecurity side. So those are some of the major things that we, that we see that are, um, that are changing when, when we're engaging. Philip, if, if you had to illustrate some of the change we've seen on the market for the past 12 to 18 months, what, what, what example would you give? Uh, I think the, the first one is really the, the way we communicate with machines. Um, software has infused every process in every industry, in every, in every business. Uh, but for the past eight years since we have computing, we have had to use a keyboard and, and use interfaces to communicate with machines. Uh, which, which mo most of the people are not, you know, used to, and even if you about business or customers, uh, but forever. Uh, one, two, yeah. Let's switch. Uh, yeah, the true revolution is that now we have a natural language to talk to the machines, and you'll see more and more with the video and audio. Uh, it will be you, you'll, you'll be fluent with the machines, and that that would change everything, um, because it is uh, it, it it flows you know the the the, the 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 data or the the information. So the second thing is knowledge information and knowledge access. Um, data is everywhere. We've been through the uh, uh, digitalization of of data. So and and there are a lot of infrastructure of data. If you think about finance, you think about even manufacturing, every, every business, you have a lot of um, textual data, emails, communications, and, and, and that's now accessible in, in fluently in, in natural language. Mm -hmm. So that leads us to business transformation, which is really our business as, a, as, as an advisory firm. Um, and, and what we're seeing is that, uh, well, there are AI programs pretty much everywhere. However, transformation doesn't occur everywhere, not at the same pace. And, and some of our clients are struggling, and there's no other way. You, 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 there are tons of, tons of initiatives internally. Um, why, is, why is this? I mean, obviously, there's never going to be one, one reason why some of our larger clients are struggling just to transform, but there are reasons. Could you, Philip, maybe name, name a couple? Uh, I, I think like any disruptive innovation, you know, it, it takes time. But if you look back, you know, one, uh, one year and a half ago, we've, we've met giant bonds already. And there are a lot, of, a lot of companies already, you know, embracing uh, having put Gen AI in production. Think about AXA in insurance or Amadeus or uh, Ch Chanel. Or, um, so uh, it takes time. That the first thing. I think we, uh, I've been also, you know, talking with um, um, a lot of people, <laughs> executives, uh, I'm seeing two categories of companies. Uh, the one who are um, willing to think about uh, what Gen AI would, would, would get them and prove that they will save time and what would be the return investment. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are testing things, siloed tests, you know, different parts of the companies, thinking about uh, a Gen AI. And the other part, uh, th those companies would, who are looking at uh, it disruptive, I need to test it. I, I, I will see, I will, I will walk, I will, I will learn by, by walking. And, and the the, the, that second category are, are, are the ones who, who are accelerating, who are in the eye. Uh, the others are still putting figures in, in Excel sheets to, to figure out what would be the outcome. Uh, and it's really, really too, too separate. Uh, and, and, and that also li um, linked to the, to the culture uh, and some, some risk culture. Um, then you can basically see that in the US and the uh, Asian area, uh, people are more willing to take risk than, than, in, than in Europe. So we've seen a, a, a publication from IDC, for example, comparing countries, and we see that France is, is lagging because of this culture. But things are, are, are going fast now, so people will, will get Get, get it. Christine, any, any, anything you'd like to add to this in terms of what we've seen when discussing with our clients that are struggling, putting in place like a, a, a full-scale AI transformation strategy? Yeah, I think the, the biggest, uh, some of the biggest like, gaps that they're facing is sometimes it has to do with the, like you, you mentioned the, the topic around risk. Um, you know, how do they deploy AI within their organization responsibly? Uh, especially if you look at some of the industrial plays uh, around insurance and banking and making sure that when they are in, um, 
when they are releasing AI into their customer experience and how they apply for loans and whatnot, just as an example. So definitely the risk element. And I do think there is a, an element of cost as well, uh, and also employees being worried that AI is going to replace them. Uh, so those are some of the things that, um, that I'm seeing within our clients. Now, maybe, maybe going back to what you were saying in terms of the various initiatives that you're s sometimes seeing, um, and if we look at, at companies today, um, really, AI can manifest its way in very different ways if you're an employee, if you're a client, if you're a generous stakeholder. Um, we've all known Copilot for some time now, and, and for a lot of employees, Copilot in their productivity tools will be kind of the first contact that they're, going, they're going to have with AI. Um, some, some functional programs tend to develop kind of point solution, uh, very specific to a business process or, or, to, or to a client issue. Um, and it could be external or ex internal facing. And, and, and at other areas in the organization, we're seeing um, a, a number of bespoke full stack application, much more ambitious by size, maybe using you know, other components of Microsoft technology or other, but uh, in, in Microsoft speak, that'd be kind of Azure Open AI services, for instance. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it looks as though, I mean, from the outside, all this is very fragmented. Um, and is there a case for companies just to govern this at once, to, to pilot this you know, as one larger transformation that, that's going to take different, because all the internal stakeholders mm -hmm. are going to be different as well, right? Yeah. So what was, you know, should, should people just carry on with the separate initiative just for productivity, point solution, you know, larger application, maybe new businesses? Or, you know, what, how can we synergize this? I, th I think if we look back again um, on the companies who, who already went fast in, in adopting Gen AI, um, uh, I've seen the kind of pattern. So the, the first one is uh, executive committee positioning itself uh, against Gen AI and saying, okay, that, that's what we are going. It's strategic. Uh, we are moving company towards that and, and communicating internally. Also assessing that there are risks and so maybe areas that will, will be tackled later. So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is um, uh, really having everyone in the company uh, understanding what those new Gen AI solutions are. So giving them access broadly in the whole company, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, to something like ChatGPT, but a secured version where we, we ensure that data will be kept you know, within the company's uh, uh, tenant. Um, and be, be, because people are not used to, to ask questions to those solutions, you know, you usually because of the lack of, of, of fluency with uh, computers, we use to, to ask very simple questions. It takes time, you know, to use a keyboard. Uh, uh, my questions are half a page or even sometimes two or three pages long. Um, because you need to put context, you need, you need to give information and it's like talking to someone. You need to give context to get the, the best answers. Uh, so, so getting access to everyone and then they, they, of course, they start with the questions at first. But okay, I'm on, on my job today, I want to recap, you know, the uh, tens of emails that uh, I had. It's about testing it. And, and we've seen in those companies that this um, uh, comes like an, an innovation box. Because if you look at uh, requests from people, then you see patterns also, and you see regular asks that, uh, that people will, will be scaling. And then um, the, the pattern is uh, really about thinking about personas. Uh, so we think about the, the planners or salespeople or developers. Uh, how, how can they benefit now from Gen AI? And that's where we, we, we have developed the co-pilots. So we have co-pilots for sales, for developers, for, for, for frontliners. For, um, so equip them quickly with, with that um, and allowing them to use their, their data to, to fulfill their jobs. Then the second step is uh, thinking about the processes, the business processes, because those people are not working alone. The developers are working with business people, with frontliners, with legal people. So when you start going extremely you know, uh, the, within the process, then you find out that sometimes you need more knowledge 
uh, because you have um, you have your HR uh, documents that you would like the, the co-pilot to use or you need uh, more uh, capabilities like a business role uh, and that's where you can extend the co-pilots and we announced a lot of great things yesterday uh, to extend our own co-pilots with plugins so basically you add knowledge or capabilities uh, so you start um, infusing those in the processes uh, and then you have the uh, rethink all uh, which, which is at, at, at the end what most companies should do because um, we are reinventing a business it's like Think about AI is a new business era, like when we invented the, the printing machine with Gutenberg. Um, you, you, you think about that in a couple of years, but uh, uh, it's really we invented a, 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 a printing machine one year and a half ago, and now it's printing new jobs, new new capabilities. Uh, you'll see the software will will be totally reshaped. Uh, so new era is is coming. So you have also to think about you know rethinking the processes. Um, because processes were made in a long time framework, now we need to adapt quickly. Uh, they were made be because of the software and, and the capabilities of the soft lack of capabilities of communicating with the software. Now anyone can talk to any, any software solution. Um, so you can really re reshape everything and that's where people are developing custom uh, solutions. That, that basically the pattern we've seen for successful companies. Maybe building up on, on, on this topic of processes and, and the ability to transform a company at scale. So, so we're talking to global companies. Uh, so these are our clients, that are your clients as well. Um, and, and more often than not, there are announcements about billion dollar programs to transform you know, a large company, like Kakaron style company. Um, however, what we're seeing obviously is, is you, can, you cannot transform uh, a global company at the same pace everywhere in, in each and every division. Um, Christine, any, any insight into you know, how this global transformation occurs, some of the various strategies that we're witnessing, mm -hmm. uh, maybe if, if there are some winning patterns that we're starting to see in, in, in the ability to, to drive this transformation globally. Uh, well, the first thing is is that um, I think our our clients uh, need to really look at what what goals do they have around their implementation of AI. What what type of strategy, uh, and what do they want to accomplish out of that? And then I think the next is is that they have to really look at uh, the the maturity of their organization. Um, and I think the the point I think there was the there was a point earlier just around um, you know the kind of big bang implementation versus um, doing it kind of piece by piece. So uh, looking at the maturity of the organization and then uh, aligning internally on your the sponsorship of the individuals that you'll have to work with because AI isn't just a, a a business or a functional topic anymore. It's now across the entire uh, organization. So making sure that you have your stakeholders internally um, uh, aligned. So, may, so maybe a specific governance, AI governance That's right. at, at, yep. at group mm -hmm. level. What else uh, have, have you seen, maybe, Philippe, uh, in terms of you know, various pace of transformation or various strategies? Back, back to that, uh, I, was, I was saying at the beginning that the executive committees need, need to position themselves, but then they also need to, to specify the outcomes they want. Mm -hmm. And maybe the, the KPIs or the outcomes are a bit different with, with uh, Gen AI than they were. So they need also to decide on that and communicate clearly. I think the um, my three KPIs or outcomes, the first one would be um, speed. Uh, but speed is, is often the, the, the overlooked uh, KPI. You know, people are looking for saving 15 minutes per day or whatever. Uh, speed is really productivity, but uh, is really the, 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 the cherry of the cake. You'll get it. Uh, so, so don't concentrate, don't over concentrate on, on speed. Sometimes it's useful, you know, if you are putting a product on the market uh, faster than a competitor, that, that's a business outcome. But um, often speed is uh, doing faster what you already do. So that's, that's the thing I would look for differentiating. It's important, the first one. The second one is quality, and with Gen AI, you are really increasing the quality. So that, that would be the one I would focus on. How can I improve the quality, quality of interaction with the employees, the uh, customers, the customer satisfaction, retention, uh, attraction of talents, um, business outcomes in quality, because non-quality costs a lot if you think about manufacturing or industrial uh, applications. Um, so quality is really where you get the most of uh, Gen AI. Um, and then the third, um, I've called it uh, um, um, uh, 
uh, deepness. And that's where uh, the, the, the real question is, uh, can I do something that I thought would be impossible so far? Or would be too costly, or, or yeah, I, I couldn't uh, uh, make. As an example, if you can rethink your partnership uh, strategy, for example. Um, one year ago, if you would like to, to partner with someone, say you are in France and you want to partner with someone in South America, you don't speak Spanish, um, and you want, you want to, them to sell their products, uh, the, your products. Um, you have to start a, a, a computer project uh, which would takes maybe one or two years to link the two information systems because you want them to be able to order your products and you want to see what the sales are. Um, today, you can use GenAI. GenAI can understand uh, French and, and Spanish. It can also automatically translate to APIs, so automatically translate to native, existing, legacy information systems on both sides. And you can start discussing, and what about selling that product, and it will automatically translate, and would put the order in your information system and the sales in theirs. Uh, and then you can start the next the co in a couple of months instead of a couple of years. So that's that's the, the kind of deepness I'm thinking about. Really think about what seems possible, uh, and new companies will disrupt uh, the ones who are not thinking like that. And I think we've, we've, we've had very similar discussions with a lot of uh, uh, maybe back office functions, support functions, uh, with very formalized process, very harmonized process. Uh, that's where some of our clients have you know, looked at to, to deploy quickly first because that's, that's a feeling that they can go global, global very quickly as opposed to maybe changing the business itself, which may, may differ from one region to another. Um, but certainly, in each of these discussions, what we're seeing is, well, um, I, I can rethink my process using Gen AI globally, so that now's the chance, uh, maybe working that very same process, maybe in a slightly different way, but also bringing more to my you know, users and stakeholders and you know, partners in general. So I think that's, that's what we're seeing, uh, really, and very much so in, in all the kind of corporate functions, support functions, that, that very much lend themselves to that sort of transformation. Um, maybe, so, we, we've, so we've talked about, uh, and as a technologist, Philip, uh, you've talked about <laughs> some of the avenues uh, that our client take to, to transform, but um, then again, in, in, in kind of large corporations, um, more often than not, you've, you, we're still left with um, tech organization, business organization that still have to work together. It's still very much siloed, not so much you know, like startup companies, which we absolutely integrated between tech and business. Very often in, in larger groups, you, you have IT services uh, and you have business stakeholders. Are you seeing... Um, for AI more than any other technology, a, a change or a shift in the way you know, these two groups of people tend to cooperate and collaborate? Yeah, they need to rethink the way they, the way they used to, to collaborate. Um, again, it will, uh, it will um, fasten the processes or reshape the processes because you used to, if you, if you would be a, a business user, you had to document your needs and then put that to someone who could uh, translate the business language to some, some uh, technical, first technical level language and then to developers and then to IT and then back and forth. Um, now you are, you are programming the new language models with, with um, your, your text input. So directly as a business user, I can, I can test, I can mock up uh, the solutions. Um, and that you have also data science and AI teams who, who have to play a role in, the, in this new area, but sometimes think about, you know, they are shaked by, by these new, they were the, the, the kings on, 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 the, uh, on the planet. Uh, now they have to deal with people who also can understand the technology and don't sometimes need the complex fine tuning or model building that uh, used to, to be needed. Um, so we are seeing um, the, the, the risk uh, maybe would be to recreate something like a center of expertise in, in the old way, uh, which could be a bottleneck because you really want to scale uh, those uh, use cases. Uh, so you need to be careful. Um, what I've seen in, in, in successful companies, they are maturing also on responsible AI. And the good, the good governance is to set up a, a responsible AI a committee board 
uh, which would look at all projects, uh, do a risk assessment on the projects, not being in the uh, in the path of execution. So yeah. at some at sometimes you ensure that the company is, is overlooking at all the projects, could could stay yes no on, on projects, but you are not um, using a kind of a center of expertise where everything has to go. I think uh, that that's the change I'm I'm seeing. It, it will take more time yeah. also. But again, a notion of maybe integrated AI governance. Um, what yeah. about you, Christine? Any? So, uh, yeah, so definitely, the there's been a sh there's been a shift in in how we are and how our clients are actually talking. So that much more so, the C-suite has been coming to us asking us how can we help to uh, advance the acceleration or the adoption uh, of AI and Copilot. We have some great examples, uh, industry examples. So one in particular and just, um, is, is just around around healthcare, where healthcare organizations we help the healthcare organization. Um, actually look at all of the many pockets of uh, data that they had uh, to be able to give uh, clinicians and also the patient experience um, one single pane of glass uh, that represents their whole health history. And that was an initiative that was brought at the um, at, a, at a country level. And there's other examples where um, from from the the um, the financial services where um, this trader surveillance, you know, the financial services organization and reputation is everything. So if you have a, a bad actor amongst you, uh, so we, we've actually helped uh, with a, a big initiative around, um, you know, giving insight into that individual's different actions and things that might be, you know, deemed as suspicious, if you will, to help them identify any risks before beforehand. And these are things that have been driven very from the top, from the top from down. The top. So it's very much different. It's very different conversation. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks to you both. I, th I think we're done time, but maybe as a wrap up, what we're saying, um, integrated or at least associated AI governance and AI programming, it doesn't really mean over processing things, but make sure we've got the right people around the table at each level of the organization. Um, stick to process and business issues, obviously. Um, and also give people the opportunity to try, I guess, is, is um, you know, it, creativity doesn't only <laughs> reside in startups. Uh, there's a lot of creativity out there in larger corporations, but people need to be given a, a, a space where, where they can try and innovate, I guess, is, is probably and, another and, learning. And, and we'll, we'll, see, yeah. we'll see pressure from people you are, you'll be hiring. Uh, we are starting to think that right now with developers. Uh, developers are uh, being interviewed in a company and say, will I have a copilot or something yeah. to help me develop, you know, an AI assistant. Which, uh, which if, is what Christine If, if not, they would switch and, and be hired by someone else. And it's you see that issue. more, yeah, it's more and more. Uh, we've seen that with internet and the Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are seeing that with uh, AI copilots. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, more to follow with Microsoft. Thanks, Philippe. Thanks, Thank you. Christine. Thank you. Thank you. you guys take care.